Uh, I warmly welcome each and every one of you from your respective homes to this lecture. And I hope you find this lecture very productive for you guys. And um, okay, let's dive right in. Now, uh, there are two options of doing this work. You can either watch me as I'm doing the work or you do, you pause the work because uh, like the way we do in the classes, you pause the work. Uh, I mean, I write down the information. After me writing down, you guys uh, go through the work and and start doing it on your laptops. Uh, so uh, either way it would work, just simply pause it, uh, write down the code very well. I'm sure you know what I'm meaning by this, but let me go through it. So uh, for next loop, now for next loop is, uh, is an option of looping through information. Basically, a loop is is something going through an a cycle. More like life. Uh, a person lives, dies, and what, and then another person comes up like that. There is a loop. It's like morning, evening, morning, afternoon, evening, uh, night. Then the same thing the next day. That type of loop. As in, it never changes. So the same thing with loops, but with loops in in, in programming, what you use it for is to go through an iteration. Let's say you want to go through a bunch of activities, or uh, well, a good example is. Uh, the one we have here where we have different items and you want it to go through the different items. Looping basically can be able to do that. For if if doesn't loop, if you've noticed that, uh, so select case, select case doesn't loop. Um, so this is the only option of looping through information. So, so now the how. First and foremost, uh, the first thing is, uh, I, I wrote here Windows Form Loops, uh, name, then Loops. Uh, what I mean by this, uh, I'm sure you guys already know it, but let me explain it. Um, means uh, when you're creating a project, file, new, project. When it brings the project to dialog box, and um, basically that's why I write the uh, what the name, which is loops for the Windows form as you're creating the Windows form. I hope that is understood. Then uh, the next thing is next thing is uh, let me do this uh, project. As you can see, Windows Form. Then this name here is the one I want you to change to Loops. I hope that is understood. Then you press OK. But me, since mine is already there, I don't want to remove it. So the next thing is um, this area here. The list. I want uh, a list item. So basically, we come here, we will go for the list box. The list box is this item here. So I simply drag it and place it here. Then the next thing is, after getting the list item, now I have to make changes to the list item. First and foremost, I'll change the name. Uh, then the next thing is I'll change the integral height of the basically integral height. I don't want it to have a particular format for the height. I want it to be false. So in the integral height option. 
as you can see from true by default it's untrue but i'll put it to false now the next thing is uh, changing the name by default it's not last uh, list data it's l just come here to the design then the name you change the name from here just click and change the name then after changing the name uh, you create this button you come here right button uh, drag it place it here so after placing the button After pressing the button, uh, you add some, mm, change the name to for next loop, which you mean the text, which will appear here. Then the name is what appears on the other side when you are coding. This is what appears this other side. If you notice, it is button for next loop. Then here. It's the same thing button for next loop so after writing this uh, we create a function um, um, no a variable a variable called uh, dim int count as integer so we are declaring a variable called int count and we are saying we want it as an integer the data type as an integer so next uh, there is this method clear list which you have created down here basically what this method does is it clears uh, information from the list as you can see uh, this area here what i'm explaining here i want you to write it down maybe what you do is you comment out like this and uh, you either put it above or below so if you're putting it above uh, you say that okay this uh, code below and you say that uh, list data I put in brackets is the name of the list box you can even write it in your books uh, then you say um, dot then the items we you know items is where the information you want to get so is where the information is as in that particular item you want to pick so it's basically an item you want to pick uh, you write that down I don't want things to overlap after this other side I don't want to. okay let me just do this mission is is cons uh, concerning the items on the list box. Uh, I know this may sound confusing, but basically. 
when you are linking this we know that this is the name of the list box now we are saying that in the list box we want to uh, pick this item called what items uh, now let me say component because it's item I don't want to use item so we're picking this component called items and in this items option what are we what do you want us to do we want it to clear if you see what it says it removes all items in the collection so this next part is what what kind of interaction do you want it to uh, to have on on the items so when you say clear remove the information from the items so uh, basically that's what this is doing this private sub is creating the variable creating the method called uh, creating a method called clear list Uh, we're going to see how it works then uh, this area here what is happening is we have clicked you have already created the code for uh, you've tapped on this after double clicking here it will basically bring us here so when you have written this code for this and this I've explained these two parts now this area here uh, I want you to play close attention. Now loops, you know it's supposed to iterate through. So basically from, it's going to iterate from one up to five. When it reaches five, and it's going to six, it will stop. I hope I've got my, uh, you have understood what I mean. Basically, for loops, it goes through over and over. When it reaches that particular number, it stops. So, loops through until which is five going to six and stops so uh I hope this doesn't confuse you. Basically, when it is finished writing one, two, up to five, one, two, three, four, five, when it's going to six, it will realize that the value which it's supposed to stop on is five. So it will get out of this for next loop. And this code here, what it's doing is it's displaying what we want it to do. This first part, we already explained what it does. The items is uh, the particular information you want to um, get from this, the items option, which is part of the list box. So, uh, in, in the add, we're saying that in the items, you want to add something inside the items. So, the add is for
placing information inside the the items items option in the list box uh, I hope that is understood so I'm sure you're dying to see now what happened so let's click start Uh, I hope you're also running the code with me and seeing what happens. So when I press next, one up to five, when it reaches five, it stops. Okay. The next one, the next one you're going to look at is the Uh, it's this one here. First, focus on this area here. I want you to only focus on this area. That's why I'm creating gaps. Uh, so, as I said, you, you can first write this code. And after writing this code, using the key in the step keyword so this is the next part of it using the step keyword so uh, you can pause this video and write this code uh, it's very simple to understand basically we are just incrementing on what we already have so basically what is happening we are adding a button called button for next this and this now for next with step meaning uh, 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 a button here it is we have created a button called uh, the text here is button for next with step then um, the button name which is going to appear the other side is button for next with step so basically uh, i'm sure you're wondering why we are calling it like this uh, we always want our, uh, our information to be descriptive i would have put uh, something else but you can change it to your liking uh, I'm not forcing you to use this particular format I'm using, but first, at, at least if you first write it like this, you can change it after some after your code is running very well and everything is working out very well. So uh, after writing this, uh, the name and the text, uh, you double click to create them. You click. Uh, click event so so when this click event is created you write this clear list uh, uh, method option so with this clear list method option it uh, it tells the code that perform this method since you have not treated any other thing here it first performs this clear list option which will clear any other information which is already there then it will start displaying what is here so uh, so what you're going to what is happening here is there's only one thing which is changed which is this apart from this there's nothing else which has changed and maybe this 
So I'm going to explain this too. So basically, what is happening here is this is telling the computer to create a uh, use this local variable. Uh, then you make it as integer. Uh, I hope you understand what I'm saying. By default, if I just remove this, and run the code to still do the job but we are trying to introduce a new method new way of doing things with the adding incrementing of this option of uh, using integer so as integer so you are basically saying this int count we want it as an integer then next is we want it to save uh, to be four by what i mean by to be four is int count at this point when it has reached this position here it will the number of int will change to i mean the int count will change to four so if you're looking at it logically, uh, int count right now is int count is equals to four. So now what we are saying is we are saying to sixteen step seven. So basically, what you're saying, uh, this integer, I mean, this int count, which is four, you want it to keep on to start from four, then keep on uh, counting by the steps by seven. Each step which is going to happen is going to be by seven. I hope you've understood that area. So basically what will happen is after four, the next value will be four, four plus seven steps. Since you have said that step seven. So if you put seven steps, it means that the next value will be 11. Then after the next value will be what? If you add seven again, the next value will be 18. Then when you add seven again, the next value will be 7 the next value will be what to be five. I was hoping for an answer and I remember that uh, I'm in one room alone. Uh, so basically, it will keep on iterating like that. The next value. Basically, if you do that up to when it reaches, when it reaches, um, if you notice, if I run the code, As you can see, 
I was tired of explaining myself. Uh, if you can see very well that 4 plus 7, 11. As I said, that the initial value is 4. Then followed by 4 plus 7, which is 11. Followed by uh, uh, 11 plus 7, which is 18. Followed by 18 plus 7, which is 25. Followed by 25 plus 7, which is 32. Onwards up to 60. The reason why it is not showing up to 62. Uh, what happens is, let me first close this. No, let me. It's stopping at 60. So uh, the reason why it's not showing up to 62 because we know that the value is supposed to end up to 62, isn't it? Because of this step up to 62. But the steps don't reach up to 62. You get what I mean? As in, yeah, you can't try to break the number of steps which they wanted to make. If the number is going to stop up to 60, yeah, the number of steps are going to be equal up to 60. You leave it the way it is. Basically, that's what the computer is doing. It's leaving it the way it is. If we change the value of this to 67, it will show up to 67. Let me close this. 67 and run this as you can see it will show also 67 because it can make that number of steps which is 7 on that next one from 60 up to 67 those are 7 steps so if it can make those 7 steps it will continue but when it is on 62, it can't make those steps, so it stops there. I hope this is understood. So, basically, that's what that this area of steps comes in. Now, the next one is uh, backward steps. So, so you can either step in front or backwards. That's the last thing you're going to look at in this chap uh, in this area here today. Uh, I want you to pay close attention to this. So the first thing is first you name the button and I mean uh, do what I said. Uh, either pause the video and wait for me to ex or you can wait for me to explain it. You write the code so uh, basically here what is happening is you write the name of the button which is uh, button backwards for next loop then uh, the text is backwards for next loop so looping backwards basically that's what it is doing so for this looping backwards you uh, when you click the button uh, basically what will happen is you write this code clear list. We already know what it does. Uh, if you want me to demonstrate what it does, as you can see, this. If we change it to this, what happens is it clears the list, then it brings this other information. This, it clears the list, then it brings back the other information. If we don't use clear lists, let's remove this clear list here. Let me run this code. See, then we place this second one. I know it is working on the second one. I think it just comes below, comes below, comes below, comes below, which looks very awkward. Now, if if we put it back to continue to do its very good job so 
Um, next. Uh, here, if you are to guess, what do you think it is doing? Here we are saying, let's move from uh, the variable. We are saying that We are saying that uh, int count is equals to int count is equals to ten. So after int count being ten, what do we want it to do? We want it to step minus one. Step minus one, as you guess. It is moving backwards. So if you remove minus one, it will equal to nine. Then minus one again equals to eight. Then minus one again is equal to what? Yeah, you, know, you get the thing seven, six, like that. So if you run this code and you come to this backwards for next loop, as you can see, it will print out int is equals to 10, the first one, the next loop, which will subtract. Mm, then the value will be 9, 8 up to 1. So uh, that's it for this lecture. I hope you have understood everything. And uh, I want you guys to give me your feedback of how the lectures have been. And uh, I want to... Yeah, let's try to be active. Uh, uh, you guys should create a group. Since you are three guys, uh, you can always create a group and you start doing some of this work. Uh, you can always talk to me and we work together. Uh, you can always arrange the time and work together. So um, let's keep in touch. Uh, let's stay safe, stay home. All those activities, please do them from home. And be safe. All the best. Uh, thank you guys for uh, having this lecture with me. And all the best. Uh, Kongs.